Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the scroll groups new to Adobe XD, and we're going to make this dark themed Instagram app utilizing that on the images to slide over to give us a carousel effect so that we can take a look at multiple images. So let's go ahead and dive right into this scroll groups tutorial. So we're going to start from scratch here in Adobe XD. I have a regular iPhone 11 Max template. This is 414 points wide by 896 high. Same thing for the vertical height. So that is going to be our starting point for this tutorial. So like with most of my designs, I have a good idea of what I want to accomplish with this project and where I want to take it. I do a lot of mood boarding and planning in Milanote. That is the software I use before I create my videos and when I start my design projects. And Milanote was awesome enough to sponsor today's video, so thank you to Milanote for making this video possible. Milanote is a bit different than traditional software. It's more like working on a wall in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, gather and organize all of your inspiration in one convenient place, and it also allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or clients in real time. As a designer, it's an essential part of my workflow, and this awesome tool is free, so check out the link in the description. So now that we are ready to get started with the design, I like to set up some guides. So I'm just going to simply drag these out from the left hand side and we'll set them about 25 points from the left and right side of the artboard and one about 40 points from the top just to give us some good guidelines to work inside. So this is going to leave us enough room for the notch on top of the phone as well as the space on the sides. This being an Instagram style app, I'm going to grab a square to start off this wireframe and I'm gonna make this 24 points by 24. For now, I'm just going to zoom in and place that aligning to those guides in the top left corner. Holding Alt, I'm going to click and drag to create a duplicate, and we'll just drag that over to the top right corner as well. Those will be our two placeholders for some icons. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that so we can see it and remove the border. Below this, I'm going to be creating the feed. So we're gonna have multiple posts from different users here. So we're gonna go ahead and plan that out. And I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag just to get a shape to work with here. And we might leave this a square for now, but I feel like this is going to be a circular profile picture. So for now, we'll leave that. And I'm going to do that one more time holding Alt. And then we'll just drag out a decent sized image section. So something like this. And I believe I want to make this something like that possibly, where the image runs off to the side of the screen like that. Let's also make this just a little bit taller and maybe add some border radius to this, something like that. And because we've added that border radius, I really don't want that on the side. So I'm just going to drag that out just like that. We might have the profile name and timestamp up here next to the user profile. So I'm just going to create a rectangle for a placeholder for that text for now, just to get a good visual before we create any high fidelity design work. So this might be the timestamp, username and profile over here on the left. Below that we'll have the comment. So whatever the user wants to say about the post. And since we have this round, I'm going to start if we pretend this round ends right there, I'm gonna create an invisible line and I'm gonna put the text pretty much lining up with that, making that a vertical axis. So we're gonna have that. And then we'll have our typical like and comment buttons over here. So for now, I'm just gonna symbolize those with two shapes like that. And this will be our post. We might want to even make this post just a little bit taller. So we'll drag that out, something like that and then we'll bump this back up. So if we grab that entire thing and we just hold Alt and create a duplicate and we'll put some spacing in between it, something like that, you can imagine how this will look as a real app. So now that we have a decent shaped wireframe here, I'm just going to title this artboard by double clicking on it and I'll just call that wireframe and Command D to create a duplicate. We'll call this one design and we'll go ahead and start turning this into a high fidelity design. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in my text and my icons. So let's just actually delete these other two posts. So just click and drag, select all that and delete it. We'll just create one and then duplicate it and change the information later. So I'm gonna grab T on the keyboard for the type tool and we'll just type in Alex 
and we'll have that be our first user profile. And let's go with Proxima Nova and let's scale this down quite a bit. It's gonna be probably 14 points. And then we need that just to be a little bit more bold, so we'll go with semi-bold. Make sure it's aligned to the left. And we'll just delete that and put that here beside our profile. And actually, before we do that, let's make this slightly larger, maybe 32 by 32. And then we'll center that up vertically and put about 10 to 12 pixels from the right of that square. And we'll delete the timestamp placeholder, hold Alt and click and drag. I'm also combining that with Shift to keep the vertical axis locked there. And I'm just gonna drag that over until it touches this guide and release all of those. And we'll say something like two hours, so two H. And we're gonna line that to the right. It's also a little too bold, so we're gonna make that a medium just so it stands out from the user profile. We want the profile name to be the most prominent, and then this will be following that up. We can also delete the placeholder for the post text, hold Alt and drag down the profile name, and we'll just line this up somewhere like that, and then push it down like 12 pixels below the image. And for this text, we'll just make this regular since it's just a body text, a paragraph. So we'll put that there and let's go ahead and add some text in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two placeholders and grab the icon placeholders up top, drag those in and center align them vertically with the text, aligning the first one here on this right column. And I'm also gonna grab the text and put in a random number, 363. We'll drop this really far down to something like eight points. We'll leave it at regular and then we're gonna drag this next to this icon. And I'm actually going to touch this right to the side of the icon since we're gonna have the icon actually inside of this square later. So I'm gonna grab both of those holding shift and just drag it over till we have it touching this right hand guide. Hold alt and click and drag to create a duplicate of both of those and about 14 spacing in between them. So now this one will be for the comments and this one will be for the likes. Just to make sure I'm going to click and drag, select everything and center it. That way it's perfectly centered. And while we have that grouping selected, we'll put about 10 to 12 spacing below the image to align that. Same thing up top, we'll grab all those, make sure they're center aligned and then 12 spacing from the top will be good. And then now that we have all those spacings and the text in, before I add the icons, I'm gonna bump this entire post up to about 35 points below our icons here in the top. That looks pretty good. Let's also add a bit of roundness to this. Test that out and see how that looks. And then test that against a full circle. I think I like the circle a little bit more, so we'll leave that for now. So I'm gonna grab Nucleo, which is this program right here. And I've talked about showing this off, but I showed enough in tutorials. I might not make a video over this, uh, but if I do, you'll see this sometime in the future. This is just a program that allows me to have different icon packs in here and I can just grab box icons. Let's go with a solid icon and we'll search up heart, drag that in, just simple as that. And then we will grab a chat. Okay, they call it message. All right, so we'll grab one of these message icons and just drag that in. And we'll drag these down to their placeholders and center them inside of those squares. They're a little large, so let's actually select them and just scale them down holding Shift and Alt to keep them centered. And we'll go down to about 16 on the width and I'll do the same for this one as well. Something like that. I think those look pretty good. Grab both of these placeholder rectangles and we can turn the fill to white and then zero them out on the opacity. And then we can group them with the icon. So clicking and dragging to grab both and then command G on Mac to group those together. So now we have this nice icon surrounded by spacing and it's grouped together. We'll go ahead and change this to something like 
5K. So we have something a little bit more realistic. And then we need these two icons up here at the top. So I'm gonna grab the plus icon and then we'll also grab this grid, which will be our hamburger menu replacement, just to change that up a little bit. Center that up inside of its placeholder and repeat that for the plus. And this will be the button for adding a new photo or posting so we can keep a nice minimal menu. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll select the gray square for both of them holding shift. And then we'll just lower the opacity to zero. And if you'd like, you can change them to white and then group each together with their corresponding icon, just like that. So the reason I do that is for a spacing trick, like I said, just to get spacing around this. But also now if I just change the fill to like this red, it's also changing that square in the background. But if I were to just set the background to white at a full opacity, so I'll just do that really quick. Then I select the icon and I change it to something like that. It changes that with the icon, so it's just a square. So by lowering it to 0% opacity, you can't see the changes in the color. But we still have this nice container for spacing. So I'll just change that back to black for now. And so now we have a pretty good high fidelity setup here. We just need to finish the images and add the color, and then we can repeat this post to finish off our high fidelity design. So to finish this off, I'm just going to turn off our guides and I'm gonna select one of these posts, Command G to group it, and then we'll just repeat grid on that. And we'll drag down and we'll set about a spacing of 35, I believe that's what we have up top. So we'll just match that and just drag this repeat grid down to the bottom like so. Command Shift G to ungroup that repeat grid to get rid of it. So we now just have these three groupings. And so with the magic of editing, I went through and added some images and changed all the text so we have some variation so it looks a little bit more realistic. So before we get into the prototype tab, I want to finish this up with adding some color and I want to change this to a dark theme. So I'm going to select the artboard itself and I'm just going to grab a black color and something around 10, 10, 10 will look good. And then we need a gray color. So I'm just going to select the icons up top and we'll change those to a lighter gray color for now, something like that. And I'm gonna add that to my assets panel to reuse. And I'm going to add those to these hearts and comments. And actually let's make that a little bit darker. So we'll just right click on that asset and just drag it down something like that. And then we'll fill these other ones. And then for all of the text, I'm going to set those to white and set them to 70% opacity just so they're a little bit brighter, but they're not too in your face on the dark background. So we'll do that for that grouping and then the one above. And we'll pretend like I did it for the bottom grouping that's currently off the artboard. So now that we have that, let's also just go ahead and change these to white so they stand out a little bit more. And so we also can see when something is liked, we can set this to a reddish color, something like that, where it's not too bright, just so we can see what that looks like. So now we're ready to prototype this up and add some group scrolling. So I'm going to select this post and this post and Command Shift G on both of them to ungroup them. And I'm just gonna hold Alt and create a duplicate of their image. And we have 25 spacing on the left over here on this side. So we don't want to match that here because when we're swiping over, I just want a slight like overhang like that just so we can see that there is a card back there uh, just to have that. So let's go with something like 15 spacing if I can get that. And then on this top one, we'll do, let's actually just do two images. And then on this one down here, we'll do a total of three. So 15 spacing and 15 spacing. And you can also do this easily with repeat grid as well, but I'm just gonna do it by hand. So now we'll just drag in some other images. And to apply the scroll effect, we just need to grab these two images and we have these three options. We're gonna go with the horizontal scroll group. And you can see right away we have these boundaries. So we have a left and a right side handle since we're only doing a horizontal scrolling. So I'm gonna drag this to the full left side of the artboard. And if I go ahead and hit live preview on this, when we drag over, 
you'll be able to see that roundness right there. And I don't want that. I want it to be similar to this. So I'm just going to drag this out until it's actually at the edge of the image. And so now when we slide over, it's going to cut that image off just like our starting state right here. And we'll repeat that for this group down here, grabbing all three of these images. And again, we'll do a horizontal group and we'll adjust the group's boundings here on the left and the right. And if we quickly switch over to the prototype tab, we can set this as the home artboard and we are pretty much done. And now we can swipe through each of these images to take a look at the collection each user has posted. And the really cool thing about this is unlike a drag trigger, it doesn't just have a start and a stop state, it has the in-between. So you could literally just leave some of these scrolled wherever you'd like, which gives me a good idea for another tutorial I might do here in the future, because that's pretty cool that you can actually do that. So that's pretty much it. We could add an icon showing that there is a collection so that the user knows to scroll. So I'll just drag in that icon and we'll just put it here in the top right corner and we'll add 10 spacing on the right and the top and we'll set that to our gray color and then we'll add that to the other image as well. So now we have that nice icon showing us that this is a collection instead of a single image like this one down here. So that's gonna do it for today's design and prototype tutorial here in Adobe XD. I hope you guys enjoyed creating this dark themed Instagram style app and using that new feature scroll groups to create that swipe effect. Thanks again to Millnote for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to check out their product for planning your next creative project, check out the link at the top of the description. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe for more design and Adobe XD related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.